Hello everyone, uh, I am Hussein Karyal and I am a physics assistant in Eastern Military University. And today uh, I am going to do the fifth experiment of physics 111. Uh, our experiment is finding, finding the density of an object by using the Archimedes principle. Okay, so first of all I want to start with the density equation. So what is the density? Density is equal to mass divided by volume. So we try to find the density of the objects and in this manual we already give you the theoretical values and we try to find the experimental density of the objects and we try to find the percentage error of them. For example, uh, this object is a copper and this one is a lead and the third one is a aluminium. Okay, so we have a third, we have a three objects and in these three objects, we are trying to find their densities. Okay, so in the equipment, uh, we just have a scale, okay? In this scale, we can easily uh, find the masses of the objects. But when we are coming to find the volume, because some of them, for example, lead is not a symmetric, so we can't do the geometrical uh, situations. So we can use the, another experimental methods. Uh, for example, like uh, Archimedes principle. We should use the Archimedes principle to find the volume. And I said before, we already find, we can easily find the, the masses, but we can take uh, some uh, problem when you find the volume because it's an anti symmetric uh, geometrical situation. So we use the Archimedes principle, experimental method, to find the volume. When you find the volume, then we can easily find the density because we just have two unknowns, mass and volume. If you find the two unknowns, then we can easily find the density. Okay, so how can we find the masses? It's very easy. Now our scale is in an equilibrium. Equilibrium is two white lines should be straight. Now it's like that, approximately like that, because we are doing an experiment. So I want to start with, for example, the copper, okay? So, when I put the copper, so the scale is going up. So I should put a weight to find his masses. Okay, so I should play with this scale. When these two white lines is a straight matches, then it means that I can find this uh, copper weight masses. Okay, so. I just a little bit increase it. You see, it's going to the approximately in the same line. 16.72 approximately is our uh, weight of the copper. So we should. Uh, write our notes into there in the manual. For example, in the object A, B, and C, we have three objects, and we can write our uh, masses in there. So I will just note them, all of the three or two one. I think that I can do the two of you, and I give you to aluminium, aluminium object to do by your own. Okay? So I take the masses and I not there and by the way this is in the gram the scale is in the gram we should change it into the kilogram okay so how can we change the gram to the kilogram divided by 1000 okay so I take the notes then I am passing to the another object which was the lead okay so now I just want to find the masses of the objects then I'm going to use the Archimedes principle to find the volumes. Now, firstly, I, find, I just find the masses. Okay, I put the lead. It's heavier than the copper. A little bit more.
third one. So now it becomes approximately in the same line. So we can take these data for the lead, and I take my notes. OK, so for the last one, uh, I didn't do it because it's the same procedure. You can do the same procedure for the aluminum also. OK, we are just doing for the lead and the copper. OK, I take the masses of the lead. Then now I should find the volume of these objects. When I come to the find the volume of the objects, uh, I should use the Archimedes principle I said before. And because, and because of that, I, I, I need a water for a lifting force to find the volume. OK, so I just put the water in it, but the scale doesn't move because this is not connected with the scale, you see? This is take the power from there, and this is not dependent with the scale. So just, and then I put my copper inside the water, but I put on the scale also. OK, so now our scale is going to the up. So then I should find a new weight. So now, my friends, the system is at equilibrium. You see, the nothing, uh, nothing going somewhere. We don't have any acceleration. So in the Newton's second law, we said that the total forces acting on the system should be equal to m multiplied by a. But in this system, our acceleration is 0. So total forces acting on the system should be equal to 0. OK? So we should think like that. The total forces should be equal to 0. So what's the forces in there? You see, we have some tension in this string going to the up. This is the tension, which is going to the up. And we have some mg, which is going to the down. And we have some Archimedes principle. It's coming from the Boyard force. It means that lifting the lifting force, the Boyard force, which is coming from the Archimedes principle, and it's going to the up. So now we have two forces is going to the up, and one force is going to the down. OK, for example, if I give the name of this ring T, and I give the Boyard force name is B, and down one is FG, so it means that B plus T minus FG should be equal to 0. OK, then from these equations, I can find the volume of the objects. Uh, and I want to explain it clearly on the board in a just a few seconds later. OK, let's continue. So I said before that the main idea of this experiment is to find the density of the objects. So in the previous stage, uh, we, can find the, we can find easily by using these scales the masses of the objects. And I take my notes and write there. This is the copper masses, and this is the lead masses. But I just changed to the grams to the kilogram. In the previous stage, I said before, I find the masses. Then I should find the volume of the objects. For finding the volume of the objects, we, we should use the Archimedes principle and by using the Newton's second law. So this is our system. I just try to draw the system. And there are three forces acting on the system. By the way, if the system is not moving, I mean, there is, if the system is in the equilibrium, it means that the total forces acting on the object should be equal to 0. It's coming from the Newton's second law. If the system is equilibrium, total forces acting on the system should be equal to 0. So we should, we should write our equations. So what is the forces to the up? And what is the forces to the down? So we already have mg to the down forces. And we have a buoyant force to the up and T2 to the up. So what's the buoyant force? It means the lifting force. Okay? And the explanation of the buoyant force is equal to the volume of the object. It means the volume of the object and the density of the fluid. And the density of the fluid in our experiment, the density, of the density is the water. We use the water. So the density is equal to 1 gram divided by centimeter cube or 
1,000 kilogram divided by meter cube. Okay, and then G. What is G? Gravitational acceleration, 9.81 meter per second square. When we put this equation, we open this equation, we find this one. Okay, so we know the buoyant force. Then we should find the T2. What is our T2? T2 is equal to the M balance multiplied by G. Why the M balance is coming from? Because we put the object into the water. Then it comes from. Okay, so when we apply our Newton's second law equation, so it becomes like that. T2 is going to the up, it takes positive. Plus B, B is going to the up, it takes positive. And Mg, Mg is going to the down, it takes negative. So T2 plus B minus Mg is equal to zero. Then I explained that T2 is equal to M balance multiplied by G. So just put T2, instead of T2, put M balance multiplied by G. And instead of B, buoyant force, you should put V object multiplied by rho fluid multiplied by G. Okay, when you put in the equation these explanations, then you should obtain this one. The volume of the object is equal to mass of the object minus M balance divided by rho fluid. Okay, from there, you can easily find the, you know the M object, and when you put this system equilibrium, then we can, when, when, from the previous stage, we find the M balance. Then when you put the data, and you know the raw fluid, it's the water, 1,000 kilogram divided by meter cube, then you can find the each object volume. Okay, so when you find the volume, so your job is finished, I think, because uh, the density, the definition of density is equal to mass divided by volume, so we already find the masses, and then from this equation, we can find the also volume, and I write the volume, data of the volume, number of the volumes of copper and lead, also there. And when you use this equation, then you can find the each object's density. And I just calculated that, and I find the experimental density for lead that 12,060, and the experimental density for copper is 8,789. So this is my experimental data. And in the manual, they already give you to the uh, theoretical values. Okay, at the end of the, this experiment, we want you to find the percentage error. So how can we find the percentage error? I just write the explanation, theoretical values minus experimental divided by theoretical multiplied by 100. And you should show in a percentage symbol. Okay, so we are come to the end of the experiment. Thank you for listening.